Welcome back to the OTV podcast, New Zealand's original and still the best New Zealand mountain bike podcast. We're back. We're back in action. We're actually got the whole the whole band together here this weekend, which is a absolute rarity. Actually, it's probably the first time ever. But um, we decided we'd we'd kick things off. You know, we're here at the National Mountain Bike Championships in Queenstown. Um, bit of a dad's weekend away, really. But uh, you know, on the on the other side of things, we don't have kids, so we have to get to bed before we do the podcast tonight. So so that made things a little bit easier. But um, that's true. Well, that's true. We are still starting about the same time. Um, so we thought we'd bring we'd bring another rewatchables back. It's been a long time since we've done a rewatchables, but when we're all in the same place, it only made sense. And I mean, aside from the usual band of uh, Red Dog, Lester, and Chris, we also have none other than Byron Scott here with us. Thanks for joining us, Byron. Thanks for having me, Kieran. That's it's great to be here. It's great to have you here. And um, for those of you who don't know Byron, he's one of the uh, you know the OG downhill racers of New Zealand. And uh, he put together, a, well, co-put together a fantastic mountain bike video called Pusher back in around the 2005 days. So we thought we'd do a little rewatchables on Pusher. Um, it was actually by Red Dog's request. He's a big fan of, big fan of it. A huge fan. I'll probably... Uh, contribute to the majority of the watches on YouTube actually. So if you haven't seen Pusher, uh, it is up on YouTube for your viewing pleasure, like all the rewatchables videos we've done, uh, which is now this is the second one. But uh, good viewing, probably search Pusher MTB so you can find some um, find some of this content on there. But it was filmed over the 2004, but 2004 World Cup series and um, some 2005 New Zealand National Series, some, some iconic names, some iconic races that you just don't see any more Red Dog. No, you don't. And I mean, iconic characters as well. And there's, there was a young Sam Blinkensop. <laughs> <laughs> so we're away now, aren't we, fellas? Um, for the viewers at home, uh, you'll find Pusher Online and we're about 30 seconds in. Byron, talk us through what's going on here. We're in the open credits. Uh, we've got here New Zealand champs uh, leading up to the 06 Worlds in Rotorua. Blair Christmas eating shit at Coronet Peak. Byron, Sam Blinken's up on some dirt jumps. Byron, what I want to know is what what motivated you to make a mountain bike video? Uh, I guess I had a lot of time on my hands. Um, it was never, I guess, motivation for a business or money. It was just something we wanted to do. Um, oh, man, this is a classic scene. This who is, who this is that, Byron? This is Who's punter, done that? punter drifting <laughs> in the van. I think we can get to that later in the uh, video. Um, Bradley Choice walking through... Uh, Crowd looking protected. This is the Laha. Team Laha right there. So what point, so you guys are obviously overseas here and yeah, me Team and, Laha? Yeah, me and Punter had we weren't paid to ride there or anything, we just had bikes given to us from Laha and we went across to Europe for I think three or four months and we just had a go at racing IXS Cups, uh, some World Cups, yeah, and just a few local races around. Who provided the skin suit? Was there were they funded or it was by the suspension <laughs> centre, wasn't <laughs> it? Were, yeah, they were borrowed on the day. That was a last minute <laughs> just to uh, <laughs> shave a few seconds. Do you regret wearing the skin suit? No regrets, do we, Chris? No regrets. That's what we want to hear. Right, so we've got a little section here at Fort William. Uh, any memories of this race for you, Byron? Just that I didn't qualify. Uh, a lot of us, well, a lot of us have those memories, though. What, what did you learn, Byron? You didn't qualify at World Cup. Did you, did you pick up um, any tips for the felling round? Yeah, uh, have a bit of bike. Stage. A finished bike. What do you mean a finished bike? Well, you were on a world beater, the Laha. That thing won a world championship just one year later. Yeah. There wasn't enough self responsibility going on. <laughs> 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 it was always someone else's fault. Uh, at least you can own that now. Well, you know, you do that when you're 20. Is that, is that how old you were at this point? No, I would have been 24. Right. So you're oh, still yeah, you're wow. pushing it to be yeah over there. I was having a go at it still. I thought it was going to be. The next John Cricaldi? Well, hopefully he brings him John. <laughs> so in, a, in a bit of a full circle moment at this race, we've just seen it on the screen moments ago, was Greg Minard and Honda, who were on the podcast a couple of weeks ago. We actually, way, well we, done, boys. That we, was extremely We well talked to him bit. about that race too, because he was yeah. only racing part-time, and this is actually one of my favourite scenes, punter in the La Havre. So yeah, this is actually, and the funny thing about this shot is he's actually going the wrong way around that roundabout too. <laughs> <laughs> and, now, <laughs> and then he stalls it. That's yeah, the best part. No, no, so, so the van wouldn't start on its own accord. We had to push start it. So 
He not only did a drift there, he crash started it back <laughs> into, <laughs> into going in. This, this is Craig's current paddle. scene requires some explanation. Oh, we'll get back to that because that comes up a bit in the film, doesn't it? It does, yeah. With okay. Craig Paddle and the uh, abdominal. Read the Mount down Who? I mean, Red Dog and Chris. I'm sure Byron would race Mount Downhill, but it did either of you guys race nah, it? Nah, it was no. kind of gone. Like I only really started racing National like Young like Four. No, nah, we there was one year Red Dog where we could have. I think it was this but year. It was. Yeah, it was this year, and it overlapped by like, well, the drive from Mount Maunganui to the first round of the Nationals was arduous, Long. and it was over like two days, and we were 16. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, there's some characters here. These win masters on a giant downhill team in a rock star jersey. We've seen um, Nathan Rankin on a foes with a custom painted helmet. Is that the and most what, is that and iconic? That's and a backpack. Iconic Rankin, right? Why was yeah. he running backpacks? It wasn't the Alps. No, because like, it you wasn't had to push. Far. You had to push up the hill. Like, it was a good hour and a half tramp to the what, top you of take the hill. Your snacks or then you all got released once you're at the top of the hill. So you had to sit at the top of the hill waiting to go. Sounds like any He's other downhill race. James yeah, you, you still haven't explained oh, why you Oh, what a legend. Backpack. See, Dodsey doesn't have a backpack. Yeah, yeah he does. He's just got knows. a cotton t-shirt. Oh, Lester carried it for him, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Craig Paddle on an intense like in Fox. Is there anything more iconic in Craig Paddle's time? The late Scotty Geeter. Oh, man, he was a stylish rider. Very good, dude. This looked like a pretty, like, how many runs would you do? Just, like, a couple of practice runs? You did one practice run, one race. Holy, that. Well, um, that was it. You did two it. You did two laps. It's not your typical down race. Yeah. Was it, was it fun? Was it a good race? It was fun because it finished at the beach in Mount Maunganui on New Year's Eve or New Year's Day. Oh, that's, that's what was fun game. about it. So the parties around that time were pretty insane. Now this the was the ground would have just gone off. Oh, right? insane, this was the yeah. very first year of the wide open team, wide open on turners, and man, it was a pretty iconic looking setup with Des Curry and Glenn Hayden. Was and that, that the was, first year? Yeah, that was the beginnings Shame of the wide right. open team. Lester, this wasn't the year. No, nah, it can't be. But didn't, didn't you uh, write yourself off after the Mount Downhill? And a bot yeah, on a box a jump or something? Nah, yeah, that was no, earlier was than that. That, that was, so we were on that was tweak 2000. Riding. That was 2000. Oh, 2000. Yeah. Um, oh, quite a few Dodsey years. and I were on Kiwi by this stage that this came out. Is their Christmas. If this is 2005, Lester, this is the year that you travelled the National Series commentating. It is, because it, you, the only thing you do in this whole film is commentate. And shave your head after two beers. Yeah. I think um, you might be right. Yeah, to, and you uh, were paid to do that, weren't you? We've moved to triple yeah, cone yeah. as well, by the way, uh, listeners. Um, fucking miserable. Looking it's an absolute it. iconic, shitty New Zealand summer mud race. Like, there was just about one every single year. And why did Justin have those horrific orange rims on his bike? Oh, I couldn't tell you. Absolutely no idea. Do you know why they matched his horrific orange Crank Brothers pedals? <laughs> so that's the second custom helmet the Rankins had in the space of two weeks. <laughs> oh, here's another oh, iconic every... piece of pusher history. Kai Crow. With his 661 flame helmet on. Yeah. That's, an, that's, that's a an nice photo. That's a good look. <laughs> this just, I remember this track. It was horrific. This was the worst race. There's Big Ian just going over the bars. There was, um, I just remember it being an absolute mud bath and people just barely making it down the hill. You were basically frozen on the lift going up the hill because we were totally unprepared, like you always are when we were all of like, I don't know, 16. Yeah, Tom the whole man Holland He still looks the same He hasn't aged oh, dude. I, I so think no, it was the year This was the year we did two race runs I'm At each race Over to Byron right here Because he needs to talk about Aaron Fernandez Who was just Aaron Fernandez NZ Ride Yeah he had a lot to do with the, the uh, scene back then actually. There is right, there right, one, one beer no, that was push it. Nah, that was push it too. Aaron, uh, uh, sorry, but Aaron didn't have a lot to do with push one. That was just me and Mike. But push it too. That was all Aaron. Some, some very quality, some quality riding from Black. There are yeah. some great crashes through this yeah, scene. Yeah, Zach go Williams down, catches yeah. his wheel and just goes over the bars out of nowhere. What kind of safety tape were they using? That uh, I think it was just a rope. Now, Byron, oh, there's a lot of uh, ads through this film. What did Caleb give you for the spoke ad? Like, how much Probably money? Probably a up? dozen beer. And a subscription to Spoke that year. Yeah, I would have thought oh, so. It wouldn't no. have been much. Here's, here's, here's an iconic couple of guys, so though. Paul, yeah. Paul Langlands yeah. and so Paul Needham. Paul Needham and Langlands. 
I, I had the I had the pleasure of working with uh, Paul Needham at Packing Pedal and Palms North for many years. What a great bloke. But just committed to the hardtail life, eh? Oh, absolutely. Castle Rock was just like the wet dream of the mid-2000s as a grom. Did you ever go here? I never went there because it was somewhere way the fuck up in the North Island and I lived in Nelson. Well, yeah, I wasn't going to Tawamudu. Do you know the first time I went to Castle Rock was for a war barbecue? <laughs> And it was with Hi. Chris Vanico yeah. and Mikey was there. You know, I yeah. remember those. In yeah, hindsight, Mikey, the, Mikey was a, the Kiwi team. In hindsight, there must have yeah, been some weird shit there. going on there that we, you know, as teenagers didn't see a lot of. The best part of this that you can't really quite see, very few people Paul Needham is sending a couple of big Paul jumps. stacks it on this run, I think it is. And if you pause at the right place or slow-mo... As he's getting off the ground just here, you can see his false teeth fall out of his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> now that is a fun fact. That's oh. an insider story. Yeah, I'm pretty this sure I was here the day that this was filmed. This jump looks horrific. It it's just looks so, bad. so badly built. So one, one little stat that a lot of people watching won't know is this was built for one of the New World Disorders. That or, makes sense. Uh, yeah. Robbie Borden, I believe it was. There's was quite a good yarn behind this in there because didn't they get super <laughs> pissed that he hit the jumps? Was that Needham? Ah. No, so that was... It was slot. when Dodsey jumped them. That he, Dodsey hit the big gaps, which aren't on here, the big drops, before the person who built them. Because the person who built them built them and then didn't jump them. Dodsey rocked in and was like, <laughs> Dodsey Sweet, just I've got snaked this them. Just snaked. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's so good. So we're into a Christchurch National round. This was, I remember this one pretty well. This was horrifically dusty. Um, pretty iconic Christchurch conditions, but through Vic Park. I still to remember this track real well. So on one of the days before practice, Blinky was in there shuttling. This is Blinky when he's racing under 17, I guess. Yeah. And uh, he's on the fire road just down after the section, pulls up for a manual, and the lowers of his forks fall out. Yeah. No way. Do you know, yeah. do you know Karen and I broke my back at this race? Yeah. I do actually, I remember that now. Yep. And then and you carried on. The following year. Yeah, you the carried following on. Because <laughs> that's what you did when you were gone. Yeah, you didn't know. Paul Angus. I remember I remember when Blinky did that. He came came out of the bottom of the um the fire road. Tom Holland disappearing into the weeds. And his face was just just thrashed. He'd yeah. just gone face first yeah, into the gravel. Oh yeah, he looked bad. And I remember he raced too, but he was um he didn't. He probably shouldn't have. I get a head injury. It did not look good, eh? Red Dog, is this the same year that we did shuttles and uh, I rode your D8 and I thought I broke my hand on a fence post? No, nah, I think it was, it was, was the, that the year following I, year. It was the following year because I rode the foes. Uh, yeah, but then yeah. you podium, so that was fine. It didn't matter. I did. I got second place there. Yeah, yeah no. It was, I fine. did well here. I actually won this round. This I won this round in juniors. Yeah, you did. It was my first national round. That was a savage track as well, eh? Like, it was dry and bony. As pretty well. unrelenting. So this is wide open. We've got a wide open add on now, but this is wide open when it was still YD open. Not yeah, not the white W I D E open. Real early days of wide open. I think all they were importing at that point was just some brakes, maybe in Tiger tires. Tiger tires and ODI grips. And ODI grips, grips yeah. Thing, uh, right, yes. One thing wide open's always been incredible at is taking any brand and making it cool. Yeah. Who like didn't? any brand. Oh, they had quite a few oh, brands, actually. Brands. You see them all popping up there. Fifth Element. Oh, wow. I don't know about that. Niche. Turn any shit down a bike into a good bike with Fifth Element. Huh? Yeah. Mm. We just didn't have any decent shocks. Well, I mean, Fifth Element was a, a step up at that point. On to, on to Dunedin. The iconic shot coming up here is Rankin with his uh, cast on. Well, he, it's after he's broken, he's just sort of rolling broken down with it. Broken yeah. And you know who won that race? Rankin, Rankin. did. Nah, did he? Or did, I thought maybe Justin won. Nah, I think Rankin, Rankin still won, won that one. Or he got second. There he is. Uh, for our younger listeners, uh, which we probably don't have anyway. Nah, demographic they, is definitely our. If they ever wonder why we talk oh, so highly of, of the golden days, it's because this race was week three of three weekends in a row, and you were on the road in a van or an old car. Just downhill racing and riding dirt jumps for three weeks. There was nothing better. Yeah, yeah, nowadays it's like either. fly in, fly out. You know, it's a bit intense. And the rules are a bit strict, and it's just not as fun. You're not allowed to wear shorts anymore. Like it's ridiculous. Everyone's wearing shorts. That is ridiculous. Do you think we can make a, a request for exemption for shorts if you're over 30? I think that should be put forward to the UCI. Like the masters class should just have a whole list of things you don't have to abide by. Basically, there should be no rules. I think. 
Uh, you know what doesn't seem right to me is the fact that I'm allowed to ride a 26 inch bike, but I'm not allowed to wear shorts. <laughs> 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 I think you just have summed it up real. That accurate. is very valid, actually. Like, I can turn up, Byron. What is. Byron can turn up <laughs> in, his, in his fucking 40s. Riding a twenty-year-old bike, <laughs> yeah. which, we, which we're pretty sure is got a pubic what hair is, and pleated it somewhere, and he's not allowed to wear shorts. What is what is less safe, wearing shorts or Byron being in his forties on a lahar? Oh, uh, Byron for sure. It's so much more dangerous. <laughs> Can I get you guys to co-sign if I write a formal application to wear shorts? Oh, yeah, I'm, I I'm here will. for it. Skinner's not happy. I remember this because yeah. it it rained between races. So this is when we were doing two race runs on each day and both runs counted for points first run here was dry and then it rained between runs and that track turned to ice so, so what, what you're trying to say if we did two race runs was that well not that I was racing this year, that we were preempting what was coming down the pipe from the UCI yeah I mean New Zealand was just ahead of the curve yeah, you know who was ahead of the curve? curve Chris Milton was ahead of the curve because yeah. this was his idea yeah. was it yeah alright Essentially, it was that. like doing seating in a race run, but both runs counted for full points. Ah, right. And then your fastest run of the day, or yeah, your fastest run oh, was what counted for the actual like result. So if you got on the podium or not. Are you guys? And I actually know it started raining before the elites because I got the second or third fastest time of the day in juniors because I raced in the dry and then it rained for all the elites. You were that guy, eh? Yeah. I was the Matty Lear coining of Dunedin Downhill. Um, fellas, just uh, while I get does anyone want a beer? Uh, oh, thanks, Banger. Go on, Bangsy. Go on, Bangsy. I might end up cutting my hair. Hey, um, the, 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 spelling, of, the spelling of Wanganui is wrong in this now, guys. Can we get a remake? Just yeah, could we get that me. edited? Yes, please. Just shows the Yeah, message. reshoot the whole thing. Shows the footage of the video. Wanganui was such a hot spot of downhill in this era. You had Blinky coming through, Windmasters. Um, well, Windmasters was there at boarding school. Glenn Hayden. Yep. Hilsey. There was, there was a lot coming out of Wanganui. Oh, it was a hot spot for downhill. Um, well, these are the river big jumps. Big winter series. These are the river jumps. They had a uh, like, pretty so cool tight. crew of old boys who were like helping run the events and make yeah. sure that the tracks and that were going. Yep, Charles, yeah, Charles yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. one. Yeah. R.I.P. I think it wasn't for him. He was a legend, eh? These guys wouldn't be there. Do you know who's nah. a legend? Yeah. Big Ian. He just did three suicide no-handers in a row on three jumps. I wonder what Big Ian does now. Oh, I'd love to know where Big Ian is. Yeah. Do you know I met Banger at a Wanganui shuttle day? I'm pretty sure did that's you? when I first met Banger. Yeah. I think yeah. I met Banger on Vorb. Yeah, no, yeah you, you didn't, uh, everyone thinks they met people on. That was weird. Vorb was fucking weird, wasn't it? Vorb was ahead of its time. I yeah, reckon we need was, to bring it back. It needs Don't to come wrong. back. Maybe this should be renamed the Vorb podcast and we'll just rebrand it. Yeah. Who owns Vorb now? I don't know. Wasn't I think Vorb, we look at one point. Wasn't Vorb like the the number one or like top three yeah, sports yeah, sites wise, in New yeah. Zealand or something? Yeah. You know what? It probably could have been if it had been built right or carried on. Not far off what pink bike is these days because no. it was pretty damn big here. It was huge. Animal. Like, there was an icon. So brand is this in the Fernandez? 2000s. Fernandez was animal. Eh? Yeah, he was. I yeah. think was that um that snow clip was Kelly McGarry. I'm pretty sure. I think it really? was, and I think it was no at Rainbow way. Rainbow Ski Field. There he is. Yeah, 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 pretty sure. There's I'll Lester. We We've got a shot. Hits 88 miles per hour. Kai Lester Chow. was here in Kaichau on a 12 inch bike, and he also had here. This track was basically just a bunch of fire breaks. This track was It savage. was in Blenheim. Remember this the, was the rain savage. came down? Oh, it's so good. That's why when we have the 20 years of pusher party, we're going to have to get like the bleeders or someone to play. Yeah. Does Rankin have his done easy bib hanging out there? Because that was a pretty iconic does he, look. Does he have the bib hanging out? He had it hanging out in Dunedin. So I assumed one week later he definitely did. Um, Byron, where did the soundtrack come, tra- come from for this? Uh, it's all New Zealand music. We 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 got the uh, the DVDs delivered to us in a big box from some New Zealand music promoter, and we were basically allowed to just pick whatever music we like out of those um, out of that box of music. And shit, there was some awesome tracks in there. Like, I mean, I think to this, listen to this. I mean, this track that's good. on now fits this section well, wow, really. Uh, hey, we spend we, a lot of time, about? me and Mike Hill, sitting there at all hours of the morning. Picking the music to match the writing, and I think mm. I think it worked pretty well. I think the music is a pretty good reflection of what downhill was at the time. Eh? It's pretty savage. 
here. And the fact it's all New Zealand music, that was cool too. Yeah, it's really cool. Oh, I think the soundtrack on it's fantastic. It certainly reflects what everyone was listening to at the time. Um, and I still listen to it now, which is probably <laughs> a little bit sad. Lisa. Well, you also still race 26 inch double yeah, well, yeah. yeah. so That's true. You've got to keep it period correct, right? Exactly. So we're on the fourth round of the National Series, and they're all still within the South Island. So we've gone from Treble Cone and Wanaka to Christchurch to Dunedin and then back up to Blenheim. So it's been a bit of a bounce around the island. Yeah, it was a weird setup, up eh? um, But did we hesitate to go to every one of them? No, no, you just got in the van or car or the danger bus or whatever. You just went away for a month. I mean, you just went away, yeah. It must have been pretty hard to race if you weren't at high school. <laughs> if you had a job. It was probably an issue. <laughs> and you had three races in a row that you either had to stay in the South Island or, or fly in and fly out. Yeah. I think it's why we choose to just go to one race a year these days. I don't think anyone was really flying in flying out, eh? No, nah, that wasn't happening in these days. No one you had the money the, for um, that. the cast on Rankin's arm here. Racing. Yeah. There he is. Yeah. yeah. Racing with a cast and a broken scaphoid with the Dionysi bib hanging out. And going flat out. Did he win this race? I think he might have. Good chance. I think Ray on podium was actually. I remember Ray was on a real tear. Scully, happy with your race? Uh, yeah, it was pretty good. Got, uh, seemed to go really quickly. Yeah, good though. See, Moki is just a feature through this whole thing on the mic, eh? Uh, no, no pressure. <laughs> I mean, he's been at... <laughs> Are you che- were you choosing the soundtrack, Moki? He's been yeah, a natural fit on the mic since All right. day one, really. Byron, we just saw a clip of something. Can you explain it real quickly? It's like a mattress uh, band or something. So that was actually my bed sheets off my bed when I lived. <laughs> no, they look disgusting. Not. Jason Marsh's house in Morzine, and we tore it to bits and made a abdominal <laughs> snowman suit for Craig Paddle, and we basically went up into the mountains and uh, just jumped out of the bushes at random French riders. Is it just out of boredom? Total boredom. Did awesome. you wash those sheets? I actually had all? a broken wrist at the time, so I had nothing better to do, and I, I was there for another three weeks, and so I just came up with these kind of different oh, right. plots to uh, fill the film, and I guess, and they ended up being these little, um, I don't know if you remember on DVDs, but little extra clips that you could click on. Mm. So if you can pick up a DVD of the original Pusher, you'd get a lot more um, bang for buck than YouTube. Have you got any copies left of Pusher Two, Byron? Aaron's got hundreds. Oh, brilliant! I'm <laughs> done. <laughs> Push a one, I don't know. I don't know if there's any even in existence. Did you have to take a whole lot out of circulation when um, no. oh, for Pusher Two, an alliance of parents? Yeah, shut you down oh, on I the original. Had, Basically, I, actually, I had nothing to do with Pusher Two, so that was Mike Hill and Aaron. So you know, I can't take any credit for any lost sponsors. Yeah, or yeah, he just, is absolutely just washing his hands. his hands of that. This was <laughs> kind of it was like a class action of parents against um, Dusted Vision Films. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. So we're now at Dream Track, which, which this is the very, very early days of it, right? Yeah, this, this is mini. This is mini Dream, and it. I mean, honestly, it hasn't changed that much. Back, nah, it looks quite similar. Back stuff. then, though, there was literally five dudes that could jump the stuff, and we're filming them all now. <laughs> yeah, there <laughs> wasn't. Now there's like you know two hundred people that. Oh, there's there. like twelve year old yeah, kids yeah. and dudes on BMXs with no brakes and yeah. Kelly so McGarry on a twenty four inch BMX. To watch these guys do Big Dream was like pretty special. And I think we're the first ones to kind of go up there and film it as well. That, so um, that big drop, because I think the drop comes up soon, eh, right? Yeah, the when they go up the top, it yeah. does, yeah. I remember watching that thing, that is fucked. Yeah. It looked fucked too as well. Skeptic landing. Yeah, it's nuts. So, but Byron, were you actually physically filming this stuff? You can actually see me in the background here with the, with the camera. So you, you the, made the this eye. with Mike Hill. Was he filming a lot of this as well? Yeah, both me and Mike filmed it, I guess. He did most of the New Zealand filming. I did all the European stuff. And then Mike did the bulk of the editing, and then I just, when I could get over to Waihi Beach and help him, I helped with a bit of editing too. Did you know how to work the editing software, or were you just kind of pretending? I just made it up as we went along, I think. Fake it till you make it. 100%. Just like this podcast. There were some big jumps that were stashed away in the, um, I think by the river in that, that they're jumping at the moment. I remember these being massive. Yeah, they're still there. Well, right? And mm. they're hitting them on like, downhill bikes. Man, fucking steep. I couldn't, mm. couldn't tell you that. There he is. Oh, Lester oh, Perry, two Connor. beers. Is that like it never grew back, Lester. No. Lester, you explain yourself. Two beers and you shave your head. 
Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't that bad, but that was a party at Ox's. I think it was was it this dad's house? I think it was in Blenheim shit. after yeah, the Blenheim, Blenheim round. After the after the Blenheim um, after the Blenheim National, and I, at the time I had pretty long hair, but it was getting a bit patchy. And then someone talked me into shaving my head, and it never got. It, I've never grown it back since. Really? Since that what, so what we're Did looking at now, that back? was where it started. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow. You can trace things it's back. The same, like essentially the same moment. haircut from back then. It's like the origin of species, but for <laughs> less head. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> there's some this track looked real good later out there's, there's some some epic shots terrible in this terrible track to ride like I hated riding this track but awesome to watch it like looks I, so I didn't good though I didn't qualify so I, this is my footage I filmed this I stood when on you the say track and filmed it. terrible is it just because of how fast it is because the track looks oh, wide open these Euros like it's a grass paddock you know yeah. It's yeah. and it's just taped and we never ride anything like that before, nah so. This is water taking out one of the spectators. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looked awesome. And then Schladming. Early, early yeah, Schladming. This is the only World Which Cup I qualified at. I'd, like to, I'd just like to say it's not in Germany. It's in uh, Austria. <laughs> yeah, it says Germany on there. Yeah, so all well, these are me riding a bike. I'm a it is blind. Did you qualify there? I, this is the only World Cup I qualified at, yeah. Oh, nice. Do you, know you, do you remember where you finished? 43rd. Hey, that's it's funny, you never result. forget, this, but yeah. this is the only race I ever qualified at. 43rd behind, uh, one place in front of Kyle Strait, and I made sure, because he's such an arrogant little shit, <laughs> that I <laughs> let him know at the pub that night that I qualified one, I, I finished one place in front of him. Yes. yes. Yeah, this is me finishing my Schladman World Cup, my own World Cup of the race. There you go. That's pretty damn impressive because I guarantee that would have been insanely hard to call. And so G. Atherton won that race. It was yeah. pretty cool to watch him win that. Yeah, that was, was first ever World Cup win. G's first World Cup win, and he is first year out of juniors. Yeah, fresh, fresh out of juniors. And this was an era of where, like, juniors didn't do that. This is not the era of Jackson Goldstone winning. And when you're there doing it, and it was so impressive because G was just living out of the van with Dan. You know, like, they were super, you know, privateer oh. then. There was nothing. They were full gypsy speed yeah. at this point. Yeah. They were, they were running rebranded Iron Hill, uh, sorry, Intensus, weren't they? They were... Um, there was an actual Muddy Fox in there somewhere. Yeah, right? at one oh, point really? they were That's riding Muddy M1, Foxes right? and then they were riding M1s that were just had Muddy Fox stickers on them. and Yeah. Yeah, it was all over the show at that point. We've got an, like, an, an Iron Horse ad on here. So this, is, this, is, this is iconic. That Blinky started the season <laughs> on the clapped out giant. Yeah. yeah. Got, the, got the Iron Horse the day it, after those forks fell apart. Yeah. And it was then just smoked everyone. I remember that. It's because everyone was waiting for those Sundays to show up. They didn't turn up in time for like the first round or something. It was um, it was very tight timing. Uh, Long Gully. Long Gully. Yeah, Long, Gully. Long, Gully. Long Gully. Long Gully, Wellington. What a track. Terrible track if it was windy. Which Awful always track was. was windy, yeah. It was always, it was windy. always windy. It was unrideable if it was wet. Had a drift track at the bottom. I think that was in the later years I had the skid pad. I don't yeah, think I had yeah. the skid pad the whole time. It was it was gravel in the yeah. early days. Yeah. yeah. Is, it was the, is the skid pad still there? What? So, so it was it became like a FMX compound. Oh right. Because okay. FMX and skid pads go hand in hand. Yeah. This no, was an awful track. I mean Wynn's got his visor oh, on that, backwards. Yeah, no. Like Biking said should have stepped in. Come on, Wynn. He's also got he, he's socks. got his knee pads tucked in. There's Kai Chow in the back of the Kai with yeah. a broken something. Uh, his heel, wasn't it? He remember yeah, his, his, yeah, his yeah, ankle. He's, he's just, just had surgery he's just again. Had it fixed. Yeah, that's 20, right. Twenty, 20 years time. later. Yeah. KB, you weren't a fan of this track. Nah. You just hated the North Island in general, though, right? Pretty much. Still do. Yeah. Kind of just resented having to come yeah. to the North Island. Yeah. Basically. Hated leaving the mainland. It just sucked in the North. Although I think I won this race in juniors. So. Did you really? Is that? You yeah, well, me and me and Blinky and. Cam Cole basically just battled this whole season in juniors and it came down to the very last round on the very last because we were doing the two runs it came down to the very last run of That's whoever right. won took the overall uh, there's um there's a uh, quite a special hot seat in this I think it was Rankin's RMZ wasn't it no it was just an RM it oh, was, was a two stroke 125 oh was it a 125 he had some sort of Suzuki deal some yeah so it's just parked up in there I don't know how that transpired but it was there I mean you kind of it was the national series you just winged it yeah Dez going deep that jump was horrifically windy and Dez and JK were the only ones who jumped it yeah it was horrible yeah Freaking Hayden 
what an icon. Now just an elite road racer. Just. <laughs> just an elite no, road racer. I mean, just <laughs> an elite road racer. <laughs> not just. Yeah. Not like that. He's Aul- a total package. Auckland's not a place you go to to race a downhill race, eh? Do these tracks still exist, Boy? Yeah, those tracks are still there, but they are uh, kind of governed by water care and dock. And oh, are they? Yeah, too much admin, but that's kind of where it all started for us building tracks up there was these trails in the Who Knows. Uh-huh. Have, having said what I just said, I'd definitely go to Byron Park. Oh, track. this track, if you wrote this now, it is a piece of crap. Who knew? This was basically a walking track oh, with a few jumps yeah, the middle was on it. It was a, literally was a repurposed yeah. walking track we turned into a downhill track, but we had nothing else, you know? Beggars can't be choosers. That triple I mean, that was in it was pretty That satisfying. triple was legit, yeah. Is that the triple that Malcolm Cleland absolutely destroys himself Yeah, it's on? coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. And Scarlet came a cropper on as well. I think a lot of people did. I um, broke my... Look at uh, that rock garden. Look how savage those rocks are. Oh They're mate, like was, landscaping rocks. That was rocks. some yeah. imported landscaping rocks. Yeah. One of the link areas. <laughs> Malcolm Cleland. Oh, there's Malcolm Down Cleland. Yeah. One of the linkage bolts in my D8 snapped on the landing of that and I went down after Michael Lanford's old man gave me a bolt to replace like one that I'd been. If you needed a bolt, Michael Langford's dad had oh, it. Oh, he had every part of the so Inter-Islander. In fairness, he was and probably taking bolts out of Michael Langford's bikes. <laughs> or out of the Inter-Islander. <laughs> yeah. But uh, 2009 in Levin, I lost a linkage bolt out of the Intense and he pulled a bolt out of their bike rack and repurposed it to fit in my Intense. Yeah, he, d- he could do anything that way. Okay, let's talk about what just happened on screen, Byron. <laughs> so this is Why Jason, off this is Jason Marsh's flat in the background. Is it Shamard? <laughs> is that what it's called? Something like that? Oh, I don't remember the name. We actually got kicked out of that flat because of doing shit like that. Shocking. So why were you jumping off the roof? Were you just oh, just again, bored. sheer boredom. Were you just guys bored. just that bored? You should have gone and done some training it. or no, ridden your bikes. I feel broken, mate. What were you doing in the evenings? That sort of stuff. That was the evening. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. Were you drinking and chasing French women? Nah. Oh, okay. I've got to be careful what I say, you know. Don't know who might listen to this. <laughs> well, no one. No one listens to this. <laughs> <laughs> no one, yeah, true, true. Gone. You fell asleep when we were talking about it earlier, remember? <laughs> <laughs> talking about what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're back to Dream Track. This is, this big is dream. actual Big Dream Track, and this was where it was pretty legitimately massive in this day. It was, um, so up above where this is being filmed from, from right up the top, the first time I came here, um, in fact, it must have been not long after the whole thing had been built, there was a massive road gap right up the top, and we were up there with Beavis one afternoon, this is Shane Beaver, and he looks at it and he's like, I'm going to jump that, and if my memory serves me correctly, he, he smoothly, cleanly did the whole thing. I believe the only other person who jumped it was Grant Allen. The Man. Kona Freerider. Yeah. yeah. The Australian Kona Freerider. Yeah. Yes, they do. Nah, we've yeah. got some Australian listeners. They'll know. Yeah, They'll the Aussie know. listeners will love it. Oh, yeah, no one knows the Shane Beaver. Oh, oh, he's been on the video, so you'd hope that you'd put two and two together. He, just, he won, just won an Auckland. He just won the Auckland National Round. He didn't even show up for practice. No. He just turned up on race day. <laughs> Yeah, that was next level way when this was happening. Because this was built. Broke his fork, eh? Yeah. This was built for neural disorder, wasn't it? Yeah. That's Basically, right. one of the neural disorders, multiples of them. There must have been some crazy shit going on back then with these guys. Well, I mean, that shiver just broke, mm. like yeah. snapped. Who breaks a Mazzocchi shiver? Hi, I'm Bruno. Yeah, it's Bruno. He's, he's still around. He's like deep in BMX, eh? So really? So this uh, Cycle Express is still running? Yeah. Yep. It's still there. Bruno's yep. still there. Yeah, he's got a machine, machine, he's got a machine he's shop man, and stuff. Yeah. That's so sick. Yeah. He's got some mega big um, 3D printing machines and laser cutting machines. He's got a big investment going on in there. That's so what cool. is he just laser cutting? Like, Does a lot of... MRP nah, he's, ma- lots of nah, he's mainly doing BMX stuff. stuff, yeah. Oh, do I look like some sort of... <laughs> <So girl>? <laughs> <laughs> just an iconic intro there, but... Oh, this, this is, is probably the best... This was New uh, Zealand national champs, and this was the very first time we ever raced on the Mount Nongataha track, which is more famous these days as the Crankworks downhill track. And this was, I mean, I still hold a piece, of my piece of my heart. You know, this track. How still good was that it. track? That track was amazing. Track. And this was awesome. This was the year that we went real wide open through a gate across the Tar Seal Road and back through another gate. Yeah. No, no bridges, eh? No nah. bridges, nah. Yeah. A, bit, a little bit of padding on the posts, so, you know, you're pretty safe. 
Yeah, and some local dude just, oh yeah, no, there's no cars coming. Yeah, and you're this good. Was ba- basically, the test race for uh, the world championship. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Now that the ra- well, so we raced oh, that. The 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 we raced yeah. this in 2005, and then start of 2006, we raced Oceania's on the track, and then at the end of 06, we raced world champs on that track. Yeah. And great soundtrack from Slum. Is this Slim, is it? Yeah, this is Slim. Man, I made yeah. this video, I didn't even know that was Slim. Yeah. yeah, but you probably haven't watched it as many times as Red Dog has. I've watched it a lot. I've watched it a lot. I had the DVD because um, I was only 17 when this came out, and I was at uni, and I wasn't. I couldn't go to the pub to the premiere to watch it, so I had to get my mates to buy the DVD from the oh, premiere, premiere so I could watch that? it. It would have been in Christchurch. Oh, that was such a good premiere. We rolled into that premiere in a limo, dude. Oh, no. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, so and there was the, the Christchurch premiere was the best night of That's my life. That's amazing. And and so we, we roll in there, and there's like, I don't know, I felt like 400 people in the pub just yeah. packed waiting for this DVD release. And That's I, had the DVD, so I hop good. out of the limo with the DVD in my hand. <laughs> and it's like, did you do it? It's ridiculous. We did a release tour, dude. We did one oh. in Crush. No, nothing but Crush. So that, that went off. Yeah. That, we did one in Hamilton. Downhill and we did one in Auckland. That's incredible. But I the Christchurch one was that. so good. And, and back then they had the NOS bars. Do you remember the NOS bars? Yes, oh, I remember dude, the NOS And there was one, there was one, w- there was one next door to yeah. the, the release. So we were like yeah. back and forth to the NOS bars. <laughs> <laughs> and my girlfriend at the time thought she saw Jesus that night. <laughs> <laughs> no shit. It was so oh. good. Also, just um, quickly on screen, iconic Karen Bennett, blue is on Some a cross. The only, the only show I did. Were you, were you on the Utopia goggles at that point, Kieran? No, no I had some JS7 signature Oakleys oh. that year. Do you know what happened to those? I sold them to you. Yeah, you did. <laughs> what comes around goes around in this sport. How are NOS bars a thing? I asked for a goggles for a back on NOS bars. Yeah, they got banned pretty fucking quickly. It's <laughs> nuts, eh? Like like I think some people died from that shit, eh? <laughs> so I don't surprised. think it was that good. <laughs> so unsafe. Yeah. <laughs> It's just but like no, James Barron. So yeah, unsafe. Yeah, so unsafe. Oh, Scotty Sheldon on a lahar. Man, this is just... This is peak New Zealand downhill national Ox series. Ox really had a stranglehold on the kits as well, eh? Like, on those jerseys. Everyone was in a rock star. Oh, well, you were either in Rockstar or Enzo. But Enzo was just mostly Tom Holland. Mostly that, Tom Holland. That was the cool thing about these days, is that... The, what was cool was defined by like whatever one of three people yeah. wearing. All those wide open jerseys were rock star ones. <laughs> nah, I, th- I think that was the end, wasn't that oh, Enzo? Those Enzo yeah. ones. Because if you couldn't, if you they couldn't were riding shorts, it was okay to wear dickies as well. Oh, this is yeah. a good, good scene right here. Is yeah, that Paul, um, Paul Smale? Paul Smale. Yeah, he Paul loved Smale. that leopard G string. And a leopard G out string out on the XC course. <laughs> Incredible. Here he is. <laughs> there is some very questionable <laughs> material yeah, on this. Yeah, there really is, yeah. And you've got to get the DVD because that's got the extras. <laughs> I mean, what do you reckon a, a DVD of this is worth these days now? It's probably fetched quite a bit on the Vintage oh, Downhill would, page on Facebook. Would, yeah. $25. 25 you reckon? I thought maybe like 28 This is um, Blair Christmas. This is Mike Hill in the passenger seat in Blair's V8. V8, V8 Hilux. Hilux, yeah. That he um, did the engine swapping himself, I think. Is this, Pretty where is this? Dude. Is this the wires? Yeah, this is the wires just out of Waihi, quite off. It's a very interesting section. Like, the I mean, I'm sure this would be fun to ride, but it's pretty boring So I went, watch. yeah, no, we went back here to ride this in our trucks, me and Kai. We spent the whole time full driving. We didn't take our bikes off. <laughs> 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 is that Paul Way Angus? Way more fun to ride. We must be, we must be in a bit of a like oh closing man, montage, no, yeah, are we, we here, are. Red Dog? Yeah, we definitely are. Yep. This is Blenheim, right? This is a party in Blenheim. That'd be Ox's house. No, no, this is in the pub in Blenheim. Ah, right. right. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I recall we didn't go to that Red Dog, we were probably underage. Oh, I was yeah. underage for yeah, all of you this. You missed yeah. some so good times. The thing, though, is that if you were underage, you can go to the pub and see you just trash the campground. Yeah, nah. yeah well, we went, I went to the party at Ox's house, and then I drove Lester oh, yeah. back to Nelson the next day. Um... Because this, it, sorry, got yeah, what is this oh, shot? That's yeah. Kelly, I need this is, this is Kelly McGarry jumping a car, and that was the loosest thing I've I'm ever seen. I'm pretty sure it's so big. He it like a big jump. In I'm a pretty car. sure him or the passenger like fractured their spine or something yeah. when they did that too, because the landing is not good. Also, where does the person go? Are they t- attached to the bike? It's on like under you know, heli biking in yeah. 2004. Um, we they did two trips, so they took bikes and oh, they picked us up. Yeah. And the bikes got trashed because they're in a fucking <laughs> they're just hanging out. Yeah, Where were you heli biking? 
some terrible track out the back of Wanaka somewhere. Oh, right. Some graphics, courtesy of Lester Perry and Z. Yeah, I mean, that's actually... Lester was the graphic graphic man on this, right? He's credited oh. in here, yeah. That's we good. pulled it in all the talent for this video. Too. You did. You really, really scraped the bottom <laughs> of the New Zealand barrel. Just who I knew. I knew three people, and <laughs> this is what we came up with. Lester's designs are probably... Promo your promotions, too. Were you promotions, no, Lester? Was promotions. Was that you that organised the party? How were you promoting it? You're handing out flyers or something? Doing letterbox drops? You weren't doing social I, I media. I got no idea. There wasn't social media back then. No, there's no social media. Did I organise something? Did I organise promotions for any year? I might have. That rings a bell. Jesus yeah. Christ, I can't believe my name even made it into this video because Byron essentially hated me at this point. <laughs> 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 Out, you can't win them all. What, uh, did you just find some kids to roll down the road here, Byron? Or? You're just following random kids around with your video camera. Again, bored with a broken wrist <laughs> after a race. Yeah, you go. Chase people around. Oh, this is a good oh, yeah, this is. Oh, Alice. 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 Keep it goal. Yeah, yeah Craig yeah. threw this one out. Yeah, that sounds like a Craig pedal moment. Yeah. Yeah. Next time gonna well, are you gonna, are you gonna if you've made it this now? far, you could have made it through the whole DVD, so... <laughs> Good luck if you have made it through this. Either watching this or listening to us, because both could probably be pretty punishing. If you weren't there, I don't know if it would be that exciting to watch, but very good for us, right, Red Dog? <laughs> oh, it's one of my favourite movies of all time. Definitely a uh, favourite New Zealand film. It's pretty slim pickings from New Zealand, though, right? Uh, oh, it's this and Pusha, too. What about Mark 1 New Zealand mountain biking? Uh, uh, nah, Pusha's just so iconic for me. It was like right when I, I mean, was in Christchurch riding a lot of downhills. We so. were living it. Yeah. I pro I've watched this I've watched this a lot of times. I think the, the, the real question here is how much of our decisions as young men <laughs> were shaped by this shit. <laughs> I... We had some terrible role models. I'm just oh, watching Byron yeah, Scott here. <laughs> <laughs> Who put Mike Hill up to that? Yeah, Mike Hill could not ride a bike. <laughs> Who put him up to it? Because it's so dangerous. Hey, how does a guy who clearly can't ride a bike get involved in making a mountain bike film? Oh, he loved mountain biking back then. He was amongst it. He was a group. He was a bit of an ox, I guess you'd call him. A fat yeah. ox. <laughs> fat but ox. Isn't that the guy that works for Yeti? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. But how did he, how did he like, how did you meet him? Like how did he get um, into it? I met him through Clinton Williams. Oh, the freerider. Yeah, the freerider yeah, guy. Yeah. The Kona freerider guy. Kona freerider guy. Yeah, so I don't know. He turned up at a race in Marito, Auckland, like 20 years ago. And, and Mike's just a loose unit, and we just clicked straight away, and we were like mates ever since. And actually, I used to, as a sales rep on the road, I used to stay with Mike every month at his house when oh I was yeah. on the road repping. So we got to know each other. And we used to shoot little videos and hang out, and yeah. It was all love. Then he got Kane. Then, yeah. You mentioned Maraitai Marai Downhill. Or <laughs> Auckland Downhill. I'm going to go deep now. Do you, can you tell me why, like, Auckland Downhill races were televised on, like, Sky or something? Do you remember What? This? Were they? Yeah, they used to have... Oh, Lester's going to have had a fuddy on that one. Yeah. Why, but Lester? We, because for a while there, um, Jeff Cox, who was at the time... Oh, he's got a bunch of stuff on uh, YouTube too. Yeah, YouTube. that's I forget the, what his production though. company was, yeah. but he was hooked up with Enzo and they were doing like a bunch of stuff and filming it and putting it on Sky and Coxie would come along and film some of that stuff. And oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, because I remember it being on Sky and just, yeah, it'd be like real grim looking. It'd be muddy every time. Yeah, it was It'd be real grim looking Auckland downhill, but that I thought was it was the coolest thing ever. That was the glory days of Auckland downhill though, like, Maraitai Downhill attracted a lot of people back in the day, and yeah. hardtails and. Are we all sure sorts. that now is not the glory days of Auckland Downhill? Byron? <laughs> as right. the person who has. Well, the yeah, I mean, apart from 440, of course. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, back then, I guess the only way you could do a shuttle was to turn up at a race. So we'd run a downhill race, and we'd have 160 people show up, not so much for the race, but just to do a shuttle. So just to do, just some, to do some shuttles. Yeah. Exactly. Now they go to 440. Spend me coin there. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> We're gonna have to look out. We're gonna have racing. to find some sort of sponsorship agreement here if you're gonna keep mentioning 440. So. <laughs> 440, 440. Well, use the code OTB podcast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you can only yeah. use it in person with yeah. Byron Scott at the for, park for ten percent off a toasty. Tell them the podcast sent you. They'll uh, they'll give you a uh, three free runs. 
<laughs> well, or 40. If you've made it this far, that's seriously incredible stuff. So we thank you, loyal fans. And uh, don't forget to, you know, give us a rating on Spotify and Apple and uh, like, share, subscribe. We'll see you next time. Hooray.